Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a fun tag. I was tagged by my friend Yori from Personal Beauty Lab. I will link her video in the description box down below to do the quarantine self-care tag. And I thought it was super fun. It's a little bit to chat about how situation is going also and how, yeah, we're coping or I'm coping. And what I liked was also that Yori said, well, I'm actually curious to hear what you want to, what you, you are going to say in this tag, because I want to take like inspiration and, and use some of your tips. And that is also what I want to, I don't know, encourage everyone who's watching this video to do is if you either want to do it on your Instagram or you just want to write it in the comments, please let me know your tips and let me know how you're doing and changing this uh, situation around. And uh, about this makeup, this is using my BYOP for the month. I'm not sure if it will go before or after this um, video, but if it is already out, I'll link it in the cards up here. Otherwise, it's coming. Just subscribe so that you will not miss it. That was a cheesy segue. Anyways, <laughs> let's start with the stack, otherwise we're here forever. The questions are, number one, have you taken up a new exercise routine? Kind of. So what happens is um, I love to go to the gym, lift heavy weights, and uh, that stopped once my headache started and I struggled ever since to get into a routine. What I had gotten into was doing yoga every day before going to work and um, I'm still doing that. But because, um, yeah, I, the weather is also better and I like to be outside and walk uh, outside in the good weather, I decided to actually start running again. I haven't ran since 2016, but I started at the beginning of March. It was even a little bit before the anything happened in the Netherlands, but I saw, uh, I knew about Italy and I was actually trying to go out less already and start to like, do preventative quarantining if you want to um, say again not for myself but for the idea of spreading the virus so yeah I had picked up running and now I follow the Nike train center or the Nike run club app I have a program on there and it gives me two runs a week and one training um, and like a workout from home no equipment and that goes via their nice Nike training center and TC and NRC it's very confusing on your phone but it's two different apps and I actually like that because you're still working on your muscles with your workouts and you're working on your cardio with the running and following a plan which I never did before, I went just running distance and time and I would die and just go as fast as I felt like, but now I have more of a structured um, workout plan, which I like. And then the days that I don't run or work out, I do yoga or go for a walk with my husband. Both of them are really good um Zen moments. I love it. That was a long answer, but yes, I picked up a new exercise routine and it keeps me sane. I can't recommend any more to work out during this period. You need to get rid of some energy and some worries and uh, endorphins are a great drug. My favorite. No, my favorite is chocolate. Chocolate then endorphins. Sounds about right. Question number two. Be honest, how much are you snacking? A lot. <laughs> so um, worst part is it's Easter. It was Easter time. Um, so chocolate eggs started coming in the supermarkets. So I was just eating chocolate eggs the whole time. And um, fi luckily we we're on the last batch. My husband didn't find any anymore in the supermarket today. So there's no more chocolate eggs. But what I started doing now is um, limiting it quite strictly to one snack time in the afternoon. And if I'm hungry in the morning, I can grab a piece of fruit, that's fine. Um, but it used to be worse that I would just munch on anything around me. And uh, the beginning of the quarantine saw my weight jump up a little bit and I am fluffier than I was before. But I'm, I'm like, I don't care anymore. It's like I cared in my 20s, I dieted my life out in my 20s. Right now I just want to enjoy and live my life and take care of my mental health first. So I'm snacking a lot. Uh, number three, are you putting on makeup just for fun or are you skipping the makeup? Um, we've talked about this in other videos, but I am still doing my makeup 
for filming. But recently, just last week, I actually, like at 5 p.m., I was like, I'm itching to do some makeup and I would just come up and do makeup. I, I take pictures to then post on Instagram, but it's not, I don't go to do makeup for Instagram. I actually go to do makeup for me and for fun and then post it on Instagram. So I think that's a healthy thing. I am hoping to keep it going. And I think what is the biggest is that I don't do my makeup in the morning first thing because I rather get work out of the way. So I get up, do my skincare, work out and then work. And then once I'm done with work, I can play. And then that's when I'm doing my makeup. And uh, it's so light at five or six o'clock. So right now it's like 6.15. It's still light, it's still doable, I can still get good pictures also, and so I'm happy. I do sometimes makeup for fun, but it, it's down to, I don't know, two, three times a week, not more. So, next question is, have you done anything to your hair? Um, nothing different than usual. So, what I have always done is my roots, uh, my hair color, I always do it by myself. And um, I always have supplies at home to do it. I do it every five or six weeks, depending on how lazy I am and how much my regrowth uh, bothers me. But that is what I've done so far. I've done maybe a few hair masks more than usual, but I haven't cut it. And to be honest, it's like so, so long. I don't know if I can show you. It's in a pin. Ow, ow, ow. It's so long, so long, like down here. But I'm loving it. Let me zoom again or focus again. Okay, so no, I haven't done anything to my hair. I am due for a trim, but I can wait. I mean, I, I haven't needed it before and I'm not gonna start right now. If I can wait for three months for a trim, I don't mind too much. What I have stopped doing is um, curling it or not curling it myself, but doing the curly girl I don't know, scrunch and keeping it curly because I find that it mats up too much uh, in the back and maybe it's not the prettiest now because it looks frizzy and everything, but low maintenance hair for me always. I'll always pick doing my makeup before doing my hair. Next question, number five, how are your nails and lash extensions? Perfect, no nails, no lashes extensions for me. I love doing my nail polish. As you can see, I just went just very Easter-y somehow, even though Easter is over for more than a week. Um, but I love paint, painting my nails. So even when I had, I had poly gel done and I did it myself for a little bit. Um, and I always asked to get like a, a the, the neutral color that then I could paint on top because I just like, I just like painting my nails. I paint my nails every couple of days. I just, hey, I'm on my, on the, on my couch binging Netflix in the evening, I can just also paint my nails while I'm at it. My husband doesn't love it because it's stinky, he says. But that's his problem, not mine. Um, and lash extensions, no, I don't have them. I don't need. I don't. I don't need to. Um, in the sense that I'm happy with my lashes as they are. I don't know. I can go out like this. It's fine. I always do. I had lash extensions once, which was a trial for my wedding, and I decided not to because it was just not a trial for my wedding. No, it was way before that. It was years before that when I had my lash extensions, I think. I really didn't like when they like get really spiky and you have like five left and doing a refill every three weeks is way too high maintenance for me, way too high maintenance. Next, question number six. What do you miss most about the normal outside world? I miss doing groceries with a smile. Um, I loved, I love shopping in general, but I liked going to do groceries and it was something that my husband and I, and I did together. Um, I don't know, somehow we bond over food. We always have. He conquered my heart with food by cooking. He likes to cook, even though he's now gotten lazy because I cook for him. But um, yeah, I, it, so it was something we used to do together. Um, same thing going shopping for plants or planning the garden and doing stuff like that and now we decided and that is actually the uh, recommendation of the government to um, go one person at a time when you buy it go anywhere outside in shops and therefore we like do in turns to go do groceries one week I do it one week he does it 
that's also a thing we have to plan our meals for the whole week usually we went shopping two times a week so that uh, food is fresh and we can get fresh veg and the meat doesn't need to be frozen in between so that is something I miss about the normal world and seeing my friends my girlfriends they um, I don't know I have two very good friends in the city where I live and I miss seeing them I miss going and having food with my Italian friends and squeezing their little girl and uh, chit-chatting skincare and makeup with uh, with my friend and then um, the other girlfriend uh, she was also my my uh, maid of honor at the wedding she has two kids that are I don't know just fantastic I miss them I miss them a lot I miss squeezing them and knowing that uh, my best friend is moving less than a kilometer up the road from me and that I can't go visit or I can because in the Netherlands you can go visit up to two people in someone else's house but I don't want to what's the point of social distancing if you're going to your friends for dinner and then you go from one to the other to the other and that's how vi the virus spreads so we I, I don't think it's responsible to do so I don't do it Everybody else is free to do what they want, but I don't do it. And um, I miss them. I want to squeeze them. Anyways, long answer again. I'm all emotional now. Oh, I miss them. Um, question number seven. What are your YouTube channel recommendations? Now, I have watched a lot of YouTube, beauty YouTube, and my favorite things are Friday mornings, beauty news, like it's my it's my thing and then uh, what do I watch um, often and happily I'm watching Lydia Millen a lot not relatable to me or my lifestyle or my style in general but somehow I like her she has this whole life that is completely different from mine or not relatable as I said to me but her content is nice I like her vibe and trying to be positive and and, and actually being still quite a normal person even though with quite high-end style and things so yeah I like Lydia Millen what I've gone into and it ties into another um, another uh, question afterwards is uh, historical building renovations I don't remember what the name of the channel is but it's a, it used to be a TV show in the UK where they went to listed buildings people bought listed buildings and they needed to renovate them and this TV show showed one year uh, of the process and somehow I love it I love any home TV show um, I'll bring it up later again but that's on YouTube and then what I do actually now is that I am watching every morning when I wake up while I have breakfast I watch the Italian news so uh, in Italy there's a channel that puts their news also on uh, YouTube it's La Sette and um, at 7 30 in the morning there's the news on TV and by 8 o'clock it's on YouTube so I watch it during breakfast and I don't know I like to feel connected to the Italian situation due to my parents and my friends being there and I've been watching that it's maybe not the most upbeat thing on YouTube but for me uh, I sh like shut off all communication about the news and stuff like that and I relegate it to that's not a word but you understand what I mean I keep it to morning news and 8 p.m. Dutch news that's what I do um, moving on to the next question um what are your favorite podcasts podcasts i have been listening to less because it used to be something i did while uh, cycling to work or driving to work and what i the podcasts that i love are fat mascara um the emma guns show one that stopped which is um Oh my god, I blanked. The full coverage podcast. That is the one I was trying to say. Love that. And those are beauty. And then I watch, uh, I watch, I listen to The Great Indoors, uh, which is instead Interiors from uh, Sophie Robinson and Mad About the House. Love those two. Really, really smart, uh, learned women. I like it. Talking about interiors. And that's about what I listen to um, in, when it comes to podcasts. Next question. What have you been binging on TV? What have I been binging on TV? I have a struggle because I 
don't often watch TV by myself. I usually watch it with my husband and then I have to find series that he likes too. So we finished How I Met Your Mother. That was our thing. We uh, were watching Picard because he's a big Star Trek fan. Not hard. I usually edited my videos while we watch that on Thursdays or so. So that we watched. Now we're watching together um, Orange is the New Black, which we hadn't seen before, and uh, La Casa de Papel, uh, which is Money Heist in English, um, that is on Netflix. Things I've been liking to watch by myself, um, or actually is something that I would was choosing, is, um, but that's in typical in Dutch television, Sundays from, I don't know, 4 p.m. to... 9.30 is housing, house interior renovation, buying, building houses, all type of shows there. So there's like the great uh, the great renovation or the great build in Australia, um, Vete Wonen, which is just a uh, show in which uh, they go to normal people's houses in the Netherlands, people who are not happy about their interior and they ask for the man and the woman or the two men or the two women, the two people in the couple to um to make a mood board and usually it's hilarious there's usually one who likes um hard industrial like simple no decoration and then the other one in the couple that's like i like boho and uh, ibiza and uh, fluffy things and pinks and mint greens and it's hilarious because every time they have to m mash them together and that's the work of the interior designer in that uh, shop really nice uh, because they are pushing a little bit the envelope and bringing the Dutch housing market a little bit more towards or the interior design scene a little bit more store modern and and up to date normally Dutch houses here you see they're all very white and bland and tones of light gray and I don't know very Scandinavian but it's a trend that was like it's a bit old now it's 10 years old now it's it's a bit we're a bit over it um and i really like how they're bringing in color and a little bit more uh character and warmth and it's something that i really like and i i'm happy that it's on tv that is was a long thing to say that i like on tv anyways next favorite book or book series um i am now listening to audible audiobooks on audible or i always listen to audio books on Audible, but what I'm listening to now is The Mayfair Witches by Anne Rice, which is funny because Yori, who tagged me to do this tag, um, she actually mentioned The Vampire Chronicles from uh, Anne Rice. I think, I don't know, I really like fantasy and um, different going somewhere else while I read and I listen to my audiobooks before going to bed. I put a timer of 20 minutes and um, yeah, that's usually just nice to listen to because I like big thick books and if I read a physical book in bed a lot of the time I fall asleep and it falls on my face and then I woke up again and then I'm, it, it just didn't work very well for me and uh, e-readers uh, I have one but I don't have a backlight on it so I would have to keep the light on and my husband wouldn't enjoy it so that's what I'm reading right now um, I can give you other I don't know, series that I listen to on my uh, Audible, but maybe I can do that on Instagram. Send me a DM if you want more recommendations. Books that I've been reading, physical books, are during the day, sitting outside after work, just enjoying the sunset. Um, I'm finishing The Effort by Lily Pebbles. I have the Anna Edits book next, and um, I also have a history book that I really am enjoying, which is The Silk Road. And um, it is moving the way you know history from a Western point of view, centered on the Roman Empire and the Mediterranean, to where actually the cradle of civilization was, which was Babylonia and the Middle East. And looking at it from that point of view, it's really giving me more insight in world geography and geopolitical situation. And it's super interesting. And I think it is very important that we are critical to un and understand that what we are taught in school is extremely focused on our own, the history of our own little corner of the world. What struck me a lot about it was, for example, First World War. I was taught it one way 
um, focusing on Italy and those borders uh, and I didn't know almost anything or I didn't remember anything about how bad it was in Belgium for example and how all the Belgians were uh, fleeing towards the north towards the Netherlands and when I went to Antwerp to the museum um, for the First World War it was so shocking that I hadn't learned about it or that I couldn't recall it, whereas I could talk about the First World War in Italy because especially my city was on the border, so we have a lot of um, different, I don't know, um, trails that you can walk and, and do. Anyways, how did I get into that? Uh, we're like, we're just over halfway. I'm sorry, guys, it's taking forever. Next, have you taken up any new hobbies? No, except for running, I guess, but, uh, oh, and bread baking. So my husband has always been the bread baker. Bread and pizza were always my husband's thing, but I find it very hard to push him and ask him for things. I'm like, oh, can you please make bread when I want a special bread? Um, and I find it's not fair. It's my personality. If I want something, I'm going to make it. There's no reason why not. So I got into making bread not super successful, not as successful as him, but he promised to help next time. So, or to help without criticizing next time. Tricky one there. Um, number 12, what are you doing to relax? Reading the books in the terrace on sunset. I love that. And my yoga. I love that too. Yoga with Adrian and yoga with Cassandra are my two, my two ones that I do on a regular basis. Post a pic of your pets. We don't have pets in the traditional sense. We have some 50 or 60 fish. <laughs> I'll post a picture of my husband's aquariums. He has two. He's making a third one for his birthday next weekend in a tub in the terrace. And then we have a waterfall. That's not a pet, kinda. And our garden is our pet. We don't have pets. My husband is allergic to cats. I find dogs very similar to children and I rather have a child than a dog uh, but that's just personal I don't know it's just personal <laughs> I, I would love to have a cat but I can't so no pets um, post your favorite or funniest meme I'll have to look it up because um, I follow someone on Instagram Polar Bell I think is her um, her nickname, I'll leave it in the description box, the link, because, I don't know, she posts the most funny memes and every day I just go through them and laugh so hard and yeah, I just find them really funny and a good part of my day. Number 15, your F, hooray, big or small, something you're grateful for or something that made you happy this week? I don't know. I don't know. The one thing that made me happy this week, I don't know. I am, there's a lot that made me happy this week. I loved seeing my garden grow. Um, we replanted one border uh, last weekend and this week I loved look, watching it grow. Um, my wisteria bloomed, beautiful blooms. Sad that, I don't know, 80% of them were frozen over last week when it was uh, below zero in uh, the night, but beautiful blooms. Um, I video chatted with my friends this week. That made me happy. And with my mom, that made me happy too. Yeah, I think that's the things that made me happy this week. And uh, question number 16 is, uh, what can I do to help you? That goes two ways. Uh, for me, what Yori can do to help me is just continue making amazing videos. I'm so happy she's back on Instagram. I'm so happy she's back on YouTube love her content, go watch her. She's so, so, so much fun. And um, also I'd like to ask you what I can do to help you. I am happy and I'm glad I'm getting messages that these videos are helping you get through either boredom or uh, just to distract you or to end your work day um, in, a, in a happier note. So yeah. I am happy that is the case. And if not, let me know what I can do to help you. That was it for this tag. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was 
funny, informative, gave you some ideas of stuff to do or listen or watch or read. And uh, I will put some more recommendations down in the description box, both channels to watch, some book series that I've been loving and um, the TV shows that I mentioned. But I want to tag you, my dear viewer, to do this if you have a YouTube channel or to do this in your stories on Instagram or to do this in the comments down below. It's fun. It took forever. I hope you guys aren't bored and uh, that you liked doing, uh, doing this tag with me. And don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe to my channel, check out Yori's channel, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.